this is what I want to do whenever I get max level if you're like a serious player. So being taught those things by other players is I think what really kind of creates those goals and having the player driven goals is in some ways more powerful than having just the players or sorry the, the game developers just tell you oh you have to do this 10,000 times or 50 times or whatever. What I love about the stuff like the Inferno because obviously you get the unique cape right it animates on your back it looks awesome yeah but you don't know about it until you see it in game you're like holy shit what is that cape where can I get it <laughs> and that might be that moment that just inspires you to set a goal and to have something like that it's, it's awesome and it's truly this end game challenge it's something you've really got to work towards all the way through your account you're probably talking max combat stats the best equipment and things like that before you even stand a chance and then there's the skill cap and i think this is something that might be an interesting topic to be honest old school runescape right or runescape as a whole starting as a browser game it's not the sort of thing everyone looks at and thinks that game's gonna be difficult that game's gonna have a skill cap if it's in the browser, it's not just like Farmville on Facebook. It's it's not. It's a real MMO with a real skill cap. And so something like the Inferno isn't just go and do it. It's it's niche. It's hard. And that's almost why it was such a big thing on stream as well. But it's less than... I don't know how many people have completed it now, but in the first week or so, it was single figures sort of numbers completing it. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I think that's like one of the coolest things, is especially what, what you mentioned about not knowing about where it comes from. And you see that dude in town and that dude has the cloak on. Everybody sees him. Everybody's standing around him. People are messaging him. That, in my opinion, is what just you never forget the first time that you see something like that in like your first MMO. You see that, you screenshot it. You're like, oh, my God, man. Yeah. And I think this, this is the very essence of why people feel strongly about us not selling cosmetics yeah. because it yeah. takes away yeah. from that if you sell cosmetics for them to sell they've got to look better than anything else and thus the reward of getting that amazing animated fancy cape it's just wiped through wiped clean yeah i, I agree i i even like even transmog I, I always get shit for this like even transmog like actually like seeing things in the game where you're like okay like, I know that this is that, and it has this meaning in this context is something that's just uh, incredible. And uh, really quick, too, uh, mods, I, I just want to say, because th this has nothing to do with it hurting my feelings. This is just to make sure that, you know, we can see the important stuff in chat. Uh, time out anybody who says that I'm actually standing right now and not sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's time them out uh it's just making it really hard for me to uh double check uh, a lot of the questions i am sitting down i'm not standing oh, okay yeah of course he is <laughs> fuck you dude yeah well no I, I totally agree i mean the cosmetics and stores and like all that kind of stuff i mean cosmetics i think for mmos in a way are what really kind of derives value because that's the first thing that you see if you see a really badass looking character that's what you want to be and like that was one of the coolest things about the games is like you would walk around and whenever you're leveling up your character just looks like an idiot you know like let's be honest you look like a, a dumbass running around but you see one dude at the max level and he's got his full like raid set of armor full set of armor and that is what you want to be like even in runescape i saw one guy that was chasing after me he had like the inferno cape on he had this yeah. really cool sword he had these, this helmet on. i'm like oh my god this guy probably plays this game all the time and it, it gives you those goals that you create internally. And I think that's what makes them the most exciting and the most uh, the most compelling goals. I think having that moment too, when you got into the server for that the first time too, like just seeing everybody, like that was so crazy. Yeah. Like that, that instantly, that, that hit me right in the feels. Oh yeah, I, I, oh, I love that. Go ahead. <laughs> I love it so much. The community is the center of this. As, oh, yeah. as, we, as I keep pointing to. We do it for the players, but the community are the ones who run with it. When we get to do things like our convention, RuneFest, and you know, yeah. just like BlizzCon, we bring everybody to one place, you've got thousands of people together. Sort of when you it hits you, like, holy damn, that's a lot of people. And it's different when you just see a number online or a number in a spreadsheet for how many people are playing. When you really get a feel for it, it's like, damn it, this is real. And so when you get moments like that, when you see so many people in one place, it's like, that's a lot of people playing this game who are into this and are watching this stream and are engaged and part of it. We see things like players help out new people, right? When when we launched on mobile, like, end of 2018, 
<laughs> we had obviously tons of new people downloading the game on mobile. Yeah. And you had people in our community, dedicated players, just going to the starting locations and helping people out. Like giving them advice, giving them some starting items. Not wow. here's ten million gold. Here's just a bit of help and, and things like that. And it's just so wholesome sometimes. That's crazy, and they're not like telling them the wrong thing to do or anything. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just your chat. Yeah. Un uh, unlike a unlike a certain chat, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That is incredible. I I have to ask because obviously, as somebody who's played, you know, like a lot of these newer games, um, a lot of the time people ask about OSRS HD, some sort of graphics overhaul. Do you think that's ever really going to happen? Because obviously, you have to reconcile that with the idea of the original feel of the game. And so, how do you feel about graphics and uh, the the dated nature of the graphics of the game? Is that more of a restriction, or is that something that adds more flavor? I think it's like it's it's kind of when I saw it, right? It's more akin to Minecraft and Warcraft, right? So okay. it's got a vibe to it yes. for sure. But I dig it, right? Like it's it's old school. But we do have I'll let you talk to it, Kieran, but we do have we've discussed. Naturally, we do what the players want, right? Yeah. And so if there's a huge demand for this sort of system, it's something we've got to talk about and work out. Because those graphics absolutely must put off people. I'm sure when you first saw it, you you, you instantly sort of rule really it out. Yes. Like, God, it looks old. Yeah. It looks, you know, it's got charm to it because people, and part of that's maybe nostalgia, part of that's once you get into it, it's like, actually, I quite like this. All the models are quite simple, polygon shapes. The polygons are all colored. It looks cool. But what i say is the first thing for us to tackle is just some of the glitchy behavior the things like the render distance right you, you have this black void that's not far from you addressing things like that can really add a lot to the game and help to make it look a little better i think some of the hd aspects like a small bit of lighting here and there can really help but this is something we need to discuss and really work out because it's treacherous waters what the game looks like is part of the nostalgia it's part of what old school makes old school and so anything we do i think really has to be sort of a toggle it's something you can turn on and turn off because some people are not going to want it some people absolutely will and it might make all the difference for them I, i've said this countless times uh anytime i see a game especially one that wants to be an mmorpg go for realistic graphics i go that game won't last uh it's in my personal opinion the only games that can last is something that has a, a style and something that has cartoonish graphics and if you ever look at on twitch directories besides shooters i think shooters are the shooters are the games where you know you can go for those realistic graphics and why because the model for a lot of the shooters is release a new shooter every single year right and comes out with new balances and that's the schedule it's like okay new game new game new game mm -hmm. and uh when you actually look at like some of the the games that have lasted the test of time even when you look at wow cartoon graphics dota league cartoonish graphics you look at runescape it has a style and it's not just going to get outdated because every time you make a game based off of realistic graphics a year later those aren't the most realistic graphics so i'm a big fan of uh, anything that's super stylized like yeah sure a adding lighting is uh, you think, sick but you think about some of the games on like gamecube like uh wind waker like when did that come out like 2002 or something mm -hmm. like that and even now that game looks great compared to like almost any of the other games on gamecube especially any of the ones that are supposed to be more photorealistic no, nobody's asking for Starry Night to get a graphics overhaul. Sometimes art is just fucking art. Yeah, I, I completely agree with this. Stylized graphics age well because they look yeah. a certain way. Look at PS1 Hagrid, right? Everyone <laughs> memes about it because of how awful it looks today. Yeah. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. But, and it's, I mean, old school, to be honest, looked quite old even for its time. It didn't stand up necessarily against the other games. But it's, it, made it lightweight it helped it run in a browser and almost that's where it owes its success too but the other thing it really gives us we can make content damn fast we <laughs> we aren't on huge fixed roadblocks where we're waiting months and months for every single character to be made we can spin up characters in a matter of days that really helps us make things fast which is great that's a pretty good insight, I guess, yeah. I mean, if there's less things that you have to, like, over-design and everything, it's faster to just put new stuff into the game. Uh, You're fucking calling me Paper Luigi now. Paper? Why? Why Paper Luigi? <laughs> what, 
What does that even have to do with anything? It, because I talked about stylized graphics, and they're calling me skinny, <laughs> uh, skinny Luigi with no muscles. Oh, like Paper Mario. Okay, yeah, I get it. That's paper, real cute. Paper <laughs> Luigi. Yeah, my chat's really funny. They're so smart. Yeah, they're the smartest people ever. <laughs> um yeah i mean i think that like just overall it's really refreshing to have conversations with developers that have like this different perspective playing the game and i think probably the most interesting thing for me is that especially compared to a lot of other like large development houses it's good to just sit with some other dudes that are sitting in their bedrooms with you know cool posters on the wall behind them talking about yeah this is a cool game i like this yeah that's cool and it just feels like a lot more authentic. And I, I want to say that I do really appreciate you guys doing this for us. Like, this is really, really incredible. Thank you guys so much. Well, uh, thank you for having us out as well. a great time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I think it's some part as well, I never set out to get into the gaming industry. I kind of got here accidentally. I'm a gamer. I got a job at Jagex. And I got another job at Jagex. And here I am. I've accidentally done this. And I've realized that I love games. And I love RuneScape. And I want to make RuneScape great for RuneScape players. So that adds like another air of authenticity where I don't think we're just some bunch of like career driven people just chasing games, chasing games, chasing games. Obviously, Mike, you've got a ton of experience, which is great to give to us who are just RuneScape players who got lucky and got into a job. Dude, I, I used to repo cars before I got the job in QA <laughs> working on Dark Age of Camelot or customer service rather working on Dark Age of Camelot. So I, I agree with you, right? I think there's a certain kind of career type and then there are certain people who are just just love playing games right I a buddy actually... of mine, dude come play Q, uh, um, come play eq with me so i was playing with him man and the first time i logged out right it was like camp and i remember busted asking my buddy i was like wait if i camp does my character stay in the game can he get ganked will he die like i remember having this crazy conversation about this but then i was addicted to it like i couldn't stop playing so i get it I actually think that's great. It's a great job transition, you know, repoing cars to being a, a face of a public game company because you're just used to having people get mad at you. Eh, yeah, well, there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. It's a long time ago, though. I, I, I got to say, like, the, the like in, entire, uh, like, getting to work with you guys has just been a pleasure. It's very rare that we get to do an interview and nothing was off limits. Like, we were allowed to ask anything we wanted. Like, usually, you know, you go into an interview, you got the giant list of things that you can't say, words that you can't say. Uh, and even when we were like figuring out what to do on on, on the stream, it was like, uh, just have fun, uh, like yeah. try out the game. And uh, it, it means a lot. And uh, I already like, I'm excited to actually get to play now because uh, I was just watching Asmund try to do tutorial island for two hours. Well, <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, all right. So I either, this is the thing, right? Is so whenever I play Dark Souls, they all told me, they were like, you've got to sit there and you've got to figure everything out yourself because I skipped all the tutorials and big surprise, I didn't know shit about the game. I messed <laughs> everything up and I died and people memed on me for years about not skipping tutorials and not knowing what I'm doing. And now I go through the tutorial very thoroughly and you know what? Now we have a whole new set of memes. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. That's what you know what? I'll tell you though. Okay. Obviously, we do research and stuff into the tutorial, how it is for new players. We've, we've, we've got people to play it and re-record it and everything, so that we can, you know, watch it, understand what are people doing wrong, why are they moving their mouse on screen, looking for things, simple things like that can help us. People are worse than you. Really? <laughs> trust me. Trust me. And that's remarkable, given how bad you made that look. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Well, as long as I know there's somebody's wor somebody worse, I can feel better about myself. Okay. I just called That's... you a statistical anomaly. <laughs> it's fine. You're an outlier. It's fine. Okay. I'll take no, it. But seriously, you're an MMO player. You do have an idea, at least what you do. You know what a quest is. Yeah, you yeah. You know there's a map and what a game world might look like. You know that yep. there's an item storage system. A lot of players don't have that insight. No. When they first play, they are genuinely like, oh my god, what the hell do I do now? I'm out inside of the tutorial. Yes. So, no, truly, it is it's a ch difficult challenge and it's something we need to, we need to get better at. <laughs>
Well, I mean, I think that's definitely true. I remember the first time that I played Dark Souls, and I had never played a game like that, and I made an absolute ass out of myself. And so, yes, I totally understand. And, you know, I just feel glad that it didn't take me four hours to get out of Tutorial Island. That would have been, oh my god. It's okay, you're remarkable. You're helping the yeah, game. Yeah, it's absolutely remarkable. Okay, well... Look, let me tell you, you worked out how to move the camera. Right, and people. Some people struggle. They don't realize. Okay. They just move around the tutorial. Like, you're me I can't click on anything because the camera. Will, I can't move the camera. You're giving me too much credit. I have to ask chat. <laughs> okay, like yeah, I have fair, to ask fair. chat on that one. Um, <laughs> is it okay if we do a few questions? Because obviously, um, the chats ask tons of things uh, throughout the interview, and they they've kind of one thing that they keep bringing up is dual arena. This is one thing that they want to hear something about. So where are you guys at with that? Kick it off, uh, Sween. <laughs> Cool. Uh, let's give some context then. Yep. So the dual arena in game is uh, an area in game. It's like a, a coliseum in a sandy desert part of the game. You can challenge other players to duels. It's the dueling arena. As part of that, you can also stake against them. So, you know, I'm going to oh wager my coins against your coins that I'm going to beat you into a duel. Um, historically, a lot of players were using that just to try and like test their combat prowess because I think I'm a better player than you are. Let's bet money on it. Uh, now we've seen like some communities in game which are more around how can I make it as streamlined as possible because I want to duel over and over and over and over and over again. And now that content has some kind of connotations attached to you know real world trading, botting, gold farming, that type of stuff. So what we're seeing at the moment is like, quite a vocal message from the community which is we want to see you kind of dismantle the, the arena or tackle types of content around the dueling arena to mitigate the, the, the really negative types of communities around it. And I guess our response to that is, yeah, we're totally open to it. We had on our roadmap, I know it's gonna sound like bullshit, like, oh, we were gonna do it anyway. But on our roadmap for early 2021, there was gonna be a project based around the dual arena, yeah. which was made even a look around, how do we keep the parts that players like and are good for the game and get rid of the bad stuff? And now because it's such a pressing issue, it might be that we bring elements of that change forward. And we've talked about everything from just blowing it up <laughs> to, you know, uh, and again, I, we talked about this, right? Again, to your point, right? You know, you're like, what do we, we want to be super transparent, so we will, right? We can cap staking. We can cap how often you stake. We can do all kinds of stuff, and we've discussed a lot of it, right? And to, to, to sweet point, it, it, it is on our roadmap, and we can pull it forward. It's, it's not, nothing's off the table. Right, and it's all because of the players and how they're reacting. But to hear and point earlier, we have data, and there are a lot of players that use this without getting into the real world trading or all that stuff. So we got to figure out a way. Like the way I look at it, it's always like we got to. We have data. We're going to make some changes. We'll look at the data again. Make sure that we're doing going the right direction. We'll make more changes. But I'd like to do it knowing what we're getting into. Because it's easy, we can just blow it up tomorrow if we wanted to. But then that's going to impact like legitimate players, and I don't want to do that either. Yeah, I can see that. That definitely makes a lot of sense. It's always going to be a uh, it's always going to be a balance. I'll say for sure. And uh, another question people had was uh, about I'm assuming the uh, the group Iron Man, where you're pretty much going to be. I, I don't really fully understand what this is, but I can pretty much guess based off of what Poe is. It's basically where you queue in and you can trade between the different people in your group, but nobody else. Is that pretty much it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, so I guess they're asking about it. So we're quite open about this one. This isn't very much like a, a secret thing. We announced it at the last Runefest we were at. It was going to be released this year, but we had to push it back. Of all kind of types of reasons. So obviously COVID happened. Our development schedule was impacted. And rather than spending all of our dev time, like remaining dev time, which is less efficient than it was when we were in the studio, working on this one project, we thought, okay, what if we were to split the dev time up? We keep people working on the, the infrastructure to build it, but in the meantime, we release other types of content too. So that's what we decided to do. That's what we talked about openly in our like our leadership live streams and our um, our monthly blog, the, the Guillenor Gazette. And we basically said, okay, it's, it's moving from end of this year to probably, what do we say, like early next year, the second, in yeah. the first half of next year, that type of time frame. We can't wait for it. We think it's going to be amazing. I mean, we'd love to see like an OTK group Iron Man. That would be nuts. Honestly, like I really like the idea of that. That's like one of the coolest things that I, I liked about PoE 
that was badass and straight up if you guys do that i would probably try and do that that would be really fun cool. yeah that would be really really cool what do you think? me and tips can cast it you yeah. and this kid can play finally a tournament you can win <laughs> okay dude all right thank you man. really appreciate that you, do you have any other questions I, I actually i'm good man i i am just like so jet like that was a that was a lot of fun it, it's really yeah. cool too to be able to talk about like there's obviously some stuff when you have a game that's just lasted so long that are very difficult and actually hearing people say like yeah it's tough uh it, it like takes time uh it, it's really refreshing so i, I just want to thank you guys for for giving us the opportunity yeah. and uh thank you guys for for getting to talk to everybody in the community a little bit and uh hope that we uh, get to chat really soon especially uh about maybe doing something with uh otk yeah this has been really refreshing thank you guys all so much we really 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 do appreciate it that's i loved it had a great time so awesome. genuinely thanks for having us on awesome. as well thank you so much of course, and uh, yeah, thank you guys very much. And for anybody else who wants to stick around, uh, Rich and I are going to continue playing the game on the after show. So uh, just stick around and hang out. But yeah, thank you guys all so much. We really appreciate it. And um, we did kind of enjoy the game. It was fun. I, I I didn't really know what to think going into it, honestly, for the first time. You like, haven't even was... gotten to play yet. Like, that's the well... thing. Like, you're going to find out really soon. Like, because the, the thing was, is you, you had to figure out, like, the, the basics we can actually do some shit well now. i'm gonna tell you guys i'll be honest i'm going to enjoy playing this whenever i don't have 100 people following me and yeah. i'm yeah, gonna be yeah, able to yeah. just kind of see what's going on and really just enjoy it uh i, I really do appreciate it because again like the first time that i ever played this game i don't know if you guys heard the story the first time i ever played the game i was in third grade my friend came <laughs> over to my house and he got on my mom's computer and he went to the website runescape.com and i played the game and i thought to myself this is the greatest game i've ever played in my whole life and the next day, I never played it again. And you want to know yep. why? Because I could not spell RuneScape. And I, I, did not, <laughs> I, I didn't want to ask, right? Because, like, you know, I felt like an idiot. So, uh, you know, life, basically, there was a fork in the road, and I went down one way. And that's effectively Dude, what is that happened. because it's easier to type W-O-W? -W. It's easier to remember. Do you guys want to hear much, yeah. something really embarrassing? I've never told this story before. I actually oh, used to call Warcraft back before I could spell it just war for that exact reason. <laughs> like I, I that's actually a very relevant question. My my uh my story's a little bit more embarrassing than Asmund's. I've never shared it before. Go ahead. I remember very vividly one of the first nights I ever played RuneScape. There was a restaurant where I grew up called Friendly's. I think it might be a chain Friendly. restaurant. Yeah, I had the strawberry shortcake ice cream and I had I forget what I did but my parents were very happy. They took me out for ice cream and they also got me like a Lego basketball set. And my friends were telling me to play RuneScape that came out to dinner with us, with my family. I forget what we were celebrating. When I got home, uh, my stomach hurt a lot and it was the first time in my life that I was ever constipated. And my parents were trying to explain to me what was going on. I thought that I was dying. And I went to the computer and I loaded up RuneScape and I got so into the game, and I actually shit my pants the first time I ever played RuneScape. <laughs> I've, never, right. I've never told that story wow. ever. The first time I played RuneScape, wow. I actually shit my pants. <laughs> and this is the moment you chose to share it? RuneScape that is only the right time. I never planned on sharing the story. Guys, I can That's see why. For the game. We make it so you can go anywhere and do anything, but only you can write the stories it will tell. generally true yeah generally true you rarely feel insecure that is definitely true um okay check 
Are, are there any wizards in here? Oh my god. I, I, of course not. A, a fucking course not. I, there's not even a question about this. Yeah, no way. You can be moral without being religious, obviously. Charity is better than social security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged. That's a disagree. Some people are naturally unlucky. I, I, I disagree with that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's, it's a disagree, but there's people that have terminal cancer, right? It's important that my child's school until research is values. That's a disagree. Sex outside marriage is usually immoral. That's not true. Uh, a same-sex couple in the stable immigration should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. Uh... Yeah, sure. Like, why not? That seems fine to me. Uh, pornography, uh, pornography depicting consenting adults should be illegal for the adult population. That's a fucking disagree. Why? What goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. That is a big true. No one can feel naturally homosexual. That's a disagree. Um, these days, openness about sex has gone too far. That's a disagree. Okay, now let's see where you stand. All right, did I read it? Sex outside marriage is usually immoral. That is a, I disagree with that. A same-sex couple should not be excluded. Oh, yeah, well, that's true. It should not. Go back to page five. Wait a second. Was it the agree of oh, this one here? The astrology one? Yeah, that's a strong disagree. You guys baiting me. You misread the porn one. Page five pornography. Beware. I'm on page five. It's not on there. I was on page six. People are saying the religion one. You can be more. You can. Oh, you cannot. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I didn't see that. Okay. That was my bad. Uh, I, I used to fuck these up all the time in school, too. Like, I, I constantly mess these up. Like, I, I remember, like, they would take me back and, like, have me go over the tests. And I would just have, like, all of these good answers. And then there'd just be, like, one fucking dumbass answer. And they'd be like, why did you pick this one? I'd be like, I don't know. Because I read the question wrong. That's why. I, I, did, this, I did this constantly, man. Uh, charity is better than uh, Social Security as a means of helping the genuine disadvantage. Okay. Uh... That's a disagree. Some people are naturally unlucky. That is a agree, but not a strong agree. Uh, actually, no, that, that is a disagree. Uh, my child school... Okay, all right, good. Let's go to the next one. All right. Sex outside marriage is usually immoral. That is a disagree. A same-sex couple uh, should not be... Should not. Okay, that is an agree. Uh, pornography should be, should be legal. Okay, uh, that's a strong agree. What goes on with a private bedroom is no business of the state. That's an agree. No one can feel naturally homosexual. That's a disagree. These days, openness about sex has gone too far. That's a disagree. Okay. All right, we're good. Here we go. Now, let's see where you stand. Okay. So where where's me? Huh. Okay. All right. Now, what, what do you guys think? Literal kami, by the way. Yeah, that, that's... I, I, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. Damn. Uh... Wow. What do you guys think? I don't know. I feel like I, I don't know. It, it's just how do you not expect that? 
Well, it's just like a lot of the questions for like the right wing ones are like, do you hate gay people? Is your race better than everybody else's race? Like these are like kind of, these are pretty intense. Like there's a lot of other conservative values that aren't necessarily hating gay people and thinking that like certain races are bad. It, it seems a little bit biased.